Let's take a lesson from one of the very best of all time, Raphael. He's not quite as celebrated as Michelangelo and Leonardo, but his skills were out of this world. He's one of Mako's favorite artists to study, so she decided to recreate one of his drawings as a way of absorbing more learning from him and getting more insight into what makes his drawing so good. She decided to focus on this drawing because it's full of movement and energy. As is often the case, the first challenge is mindset. Think, oh, I can't draw anything like this level, so what's the point in copying this? I'm doomed to fail. And as usual, it's important to keep in mind our purpose. We aren't trying to be on par with Raphael, or even just to faithfully copy his drawing. We're trying to learn. We're trying to train artistic muscles. Raphael's on many people's greatest of all time shortlist for line quality, fluency, hatching, and movement. There's tons we can learn every time we do a study of him. To be honest, if you try to copy his drawings, there's no way you won't learn something. So success in this exercise is inevitable. This is a game that you can only win. Ideally, we're not just going to start mindlessly matching lines like a robot. Instead, we'll try to recreate the process of drawing this figure like Raphael did. Firstly, we're going to assess the pose that he was basing this on. So the key is the twist. There's so much power being built up here in the torso. And really, if we look at this pose, I mean, it's a beautiful drawing, but the scene is kind of violent. I mean, we can just sense how much power there is going into what comes next. Now, since we're learning life drawing, we might be a little less confident than Raphael. Often when you're less confident, you'll reduce the movement, reduce the angles, the dynamism in the pose. We somehow unconsciously make them more bland because somehow that feels safer. You can avoid that by pushing that twist in your drawing, even exaggerate the angles. It would be easy to reduce the angle between the bulk of the torso down to the pelvis. Notice this sharp angle and fight to keep Raphael's movement in your drawing. Now the pose is quite balanced around this leg, that's his stability. And Raphael's taking care over the center of gravity and balancing the figure over this leg so we can do the same thing. And this core feels like a coiled spring full of tension. And then around it, there's this left leg and the arms balancing each other out and adding to the twisting feeling. You know, gestural drawings often feel really great when they've got all this movement and energy around this stability, around a sort of stable structure. So let's look for the big shapes in the figure. Blur your eyes a bit and look at what's coming towards us and what's receding. That left leg is coming towards us. The knee has a bit more detail and more contrast and that helps to emphasize that. The left shoulder and shoulder blade are also coming towards us. So we can bring that forward too in our drawing. They're gonna spin away from us as he brings that stick down. So emphasizing how they're coming towards us helps us to enhance that coiled spring feeling. So where's Raphael added lots of contrast and detail? He's bringing our eyes to these areas. They're adding to that twisting movement in the figure and bringing attention to the tension in the back and shoulders because the point of the drawing is they're gearing up for this terrible swing. And they're also nicely balanced around that stable center. So Mako got to grips with Raphael's treatment of the pose in this drawing and we learned a lot from that, but there's another aspect to the original that would be great to learn more about. Look at his lines and his hatching. They're fine and elegant, but also powerful. She did her drawing at a small scale because it had to fit on the camera, and that made trying to match his hatching pretty difficult. To learn more about this beautiful hatching, she tried to zoom in on one part of the figure, that crucial shoulder and shoulder blade, and try to recreate Raphael's lines and hatching. 
A hatching supports the movement of the pose, not just following the contours of the figure, but also reinforcing that twist in the figure. Raphael repeated a few lines in one area to achieve the right curve, so don't be afraid to adjust your lines that way, but just avoid tentative, heavy lines. Make light, swift lines, and then accentuate them with a strong line when it's necessary. The lines seamlessly serve multiple functions. Sh the hatching gives us shade, it gives us form, movement, the feel of muscle, the feel of bone and the anatomy. So while we initially thought that this would just be a matter of drawing bigger and matching that fine hatching, we realized that his hatching is really intricate and really effective in a variety of ways. So we'd need to do more study to truly understand how it works. There's so much to learn from an artist like this, it's worth doing regular and repeated studies of their work. In case you haven't seen them, we have other breakdowns of artists, uh, past and present, and people have really enjoyed them, so check them out, we'll link to them below. We've also got a new series of videos on gesture drawing, in case you missed that, well worth a watch, do those exercises and it will really bring movement and energy to your drawings.